Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be looking at stacks in SwiftUI. We'll discuss the different kinds of stacks and when to use them as well as the limitations for each one. So sometimes when you're building your apps you may want to lay out views and position them but we're actually able to use stacks to help us achieve this. In SwiftUI there are three stacks that are available to us, ZStack, VStack and HStack. So let's look at how each one works for us starting out with ZStack. So a Z stack allows us to position views on top of each other based on their index. So what we're going to do is create a new SwiftUI file called Z stack example and wrap our text within it. So let's create a new file and then we'll call this Z stack example, like I said. And then what we're going to do is actually just wrap this text within a Z stack. So a quick way to do this is to just hold down the command key on your keyboard and then click on text and then you should see an option here called embed in Z stack like so and now when you look at it it actually doesn't have an effect and it won't have an effect until we actually add another view within it so in order to see that effect let's actually add in a SF symbol like a star behind our text and if you want to learn more about SF symbols then check out my video SF symbols in SwiftUI so I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down Okay, cool. So what we have here is we have our image, which is using the star SF symbol, and then we're saying that we want it to be resizable, scale to fit the screen, set the symbol variant to be fill, and then we're going to give it a foreground style of yellow, so it has a yellow um, fill to it. But notice how, because we place our star first within our Z stack, this is the first element that is positioned followed by our text. So the order, depending on where our elements are stacked on the Z index, determines where it gets positioned on the screen. But we're not just limited to just moving our elements directly within the Z stack closure. What we can actually do is control the position of our views directly using a SwiftUI modifier called Z index. So let's actually move our text behind our star. So if you want to do that on the text, if you just hit enter and then just say, Z index and if we just gave this a Z index of minus one you'll notice now that our text has gone behind our star and the reason for this is because by default the image has a Z index of zero and this is less than zero so our image now takes priority over our text even though it's positioned higher within our Z stack. If we want to actually move our star behind our text what we need to do is actually give it a value lower a negative one so if we actually gave our image the z index of negative two you'll now see that our star has now gone back behind our text so that's actually a really useful way you can actually swap views back you know between you know sending to the front and sending backwards using the z index modifier within swift ui but we actually don't want to use this so i'm just going to comment this out or actually I'll just remove it. So the next thing I want to do is actually show you how we can actually move the alignment of our views in SwiftUI. So on ZStack, you actually have a parameter that you can use in the initializer called alignment. So actually set this alignment parameter to top. And now, you can see that our star has moved to the top. And if we wanted to, we could actually change this to something like bottom leading and our text now positions itself to the bottom leading on top of our star. So we've looked at Z stack, but what about if we actually want to lay out our views vertically? Well, we have a common view for this called V stack that allows us to do this. So let's actually look at this and create an example file called V stack example. So within our V stack example, let's actually create a V stack holding down command and clicking on our text. And we'll choose the option here called embed in V stack. So now again, you won't actually see an effect here, but if I actually duplicate this text and create another version, you'll notice that now our two texts are being positioned vertically. But we can actually take this further if we wanted to and actually set some spacing between each item by using the spacing parameter that's available to us with VStacks. So if I just create the initializer and then if I just type out spacing, and now we can give this a value such as 32 and you'll see that we now have spacing between each item within our vstack also we want to create some kind of list with our vstack 
we're able to do that by using a for each within it and if you want to learn more about this to check out my videos breaking down identifiable in swift ui identifiable and for each in swift ui and scroll view and scroll view reader in swift ui to learn more about the benefits of this approach and when not to use it so within our vstack let's actually create a for each and we'll give it a text view within it with each item so now we have a for each that's simply looping through a range of one to ten we're using the number to uniquely identify itself and then we're creating a text view on the screen which is using the dollar sign zero notation to access the item and display that on the screen which is the index from here so the next thing that I want to do is actually show you how we can actually change the alignment of items within our VStack. So right now, this is actually within the center of it. But if we wanted to, I could actually specify I want these to move to the left. So to do that, there is another parameter called alignment similar to ZStack. And we can just specify the alignment to be leading like so. And now you'll notice that our items have shifted to the left hand side. Now it's worth noting that when you're working with VStacks, the alignment is horizontal alignment. So what I mean by this is that you can only set the alignment to be leading, trailing or center. You can't use top and bottom. Those are only reserved for HStack, which we'll get onto in a second. So finally, we're going to have a look at HStack. So let's create a file called HStack example. A HStack lays out its views horizontally. It's similar to VStack where we can actually set spacing, but the only difference is the alignment can only be vertical, which is top, bottom, and center, like I said before. So let's actually add in a HStack and then break it down. So we have a similar example to our VStack before, where we have our HStack, except this time, rather than using VStack, we have HStack here. We specify the spacing and we have a for each loop to loop through some numbers and text. What you can see here, we've actually got a problem. And the problem here is that our text doesn't actually know its size. So in order to fix this issue, what we need to do is actually specify on our text a fixed size. So what we're saying here is that I want you to just set your size based on the content within it. And the content within it is the text here. So now you can see that the text width is wrapped around length of its content. So as you can see here, we're now able to place our views horizontally within a HStack like so. Okay, so we've actually broken down HStack, VStack, and ZStack. But what you would normally do is you'd normally actually combine all three of these stacks to actually build, you know, more complex um, UI. But before we actually get onto that, what we're going to do is actually talk about you know the limitations of stacks. So in the examples that we've been working with, we've actually been working with dynamic views. So what I mean by that is because we've not actually specified 10 text views. We've just been, you know, creating them based off some kind of list. But what about if we had an example where we actually had to specify individually each view that we want to appear within our VStack. So just to show you an example of this, let's actually just comment out our for each. And then we're going to list out 11 text views. So now you'll notice that when you actually lay out these 11 text views, you actually have an error here. And the error is telling you that's an extra argument in the call. Well, this is something that's common with stacks. And what this is, is that when you're working with stacks at the moment of this recording, you're only able to actually add a maximum of 10 static elements within a HStack. So if you're working with a for each loop, you're actually able to get away with this because the for each is a view that is wrapped around your list of items. But because we're dynamically specifying each view statically here, you're only able to specify 10 views within a stack. So how do you actually get around it if you actually, for whatever reason, need to use more than, you know, 10 items within a static list like this? Well, you can do this by using the group view and you can actually group your views in chunks like so. So now if I actually take this out, so if I put 10 items in my group here, and if I wrap this within a group again, you'll notice that our error actually goes away. So now we actually have two groups here that are being split 
and we're not we're not limited to just having 10 items within our haystack. So now we've spoken about the limitations. One final thing I want to talk about is how we can actually combine views in individually to build more complex views. And I actually have a video breaking this down where we actually rebuild the Weber component in SwiftUI. So you should check out that video called Mastering Stacks in SwiftUI. Okay, so that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.